hearty welcome to each one of you to the 35th Plenary Assembly of the Catholic Bishops Conference of India. With great joy, we request the Papal Representative, the Papal Envoy, Archbishop Leopoldo Girelli, to lead us in the Eucharist as we begin this assembly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
ruler and guardian of your church. Pour out, we pray, upon your servants a spirit of truth, understanding, and peace, that they may strive with all their heart to know what is pleasing to you, and then pursue it with all their strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Appoint elders as I directed you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began, and at the proper time manifested in his words, through the preaching with which I have been entrusted, by the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, my true child in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. This is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife, and his children are believers, and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. For a bishop, a go as God's steward, must be above reproach, or a drunkard, or violent, or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instructions in sound doctrine, and also to rebuke to those who contradict it. The word of the Lord. Your response shall be, these are the people who seek your face, O Lord. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. The Lord sees the earth and its fullness. The world Right, you 
the gospel acclamation. lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung round his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. The Gospel of the Lord. Your Eminence, uh, Cardinal Oswald, uh, gracious um, Archbishop of Bombay and President of the CBCI, your uh, Beatitudes, your Eminences, Graces, Lordships, Reverend Fathers, Reverend Sisters, Reverend Brothers, and my dear lay faithful in, in our Lord Jesus Christ. I am truly glad to be present in this auditorium of St. John's National Academy of Health Sciences in Bangalore and celebrate the Holy Mass with you this morning on the occasion of the inaugural event of the 35th 
CBCI General Body Meeting. I wish to greet uh, His Eminence Cardinal Mario Grec, Secretary General of the Synod of Bishops. Your Eminence, it is an honor for the Church in India to have you in this uh, national meeting. Your presence with us strengthens the bonds of unity with the successor of Peter. The intention of the Holy Father Francis for the month of November 2022 is to pray for children who are suffering, especially those who are homeless, orphans, and victims of war, so that they may have access to education and the opportunity to experience family affection. In one of his Wednesday audience's messages, Pope Francis noted, from the first moments of their lives, many children are rejected, abandoned, and robbed of their childhood and future. There are those who dare to say, as if to justify themselves, that it was a mistake to bring these children into the world. But children, said the Pope, are never a mistake. Their hunger is not a mistake, nor is their poverty, their vulnerability, their abandonment. So many children are abandoned on the streets, and neither is their ignorance or their helplessness. So many children don't even know what a school is. If anything, this should be reason to love them all the more with greater generosity. Let us unite our prayers and commitments also with those of the Holy Father as we pray together for children who are suffering. And in India, there are many. Dear brothers and sisters, in the first reading taken from the letter of St. Paul to Titus, the Apostle urges Titus to appoint worthy elders in every town to positions and responsibility and to preach sound doctrine. He then lists the virtues that must be present in the elders of the church. The elders must be faithful, trustworthy, and above reproach as God's steward. Further, as a person, the elders must be hospitable, lover of goodness, sensible, just, devout, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word, which is in accordance with the teaching of the Church. Thus, on a profound level, this insightful letter recommends the people of God to lead an exemplary Christian life and proclaim sound Christian doctrine. In fact, St. Paul VI aptly remarked, there is no doubt that the effort to proclaim the gospel to the people of today is a service rendered to the Christian community and also to the whole of humanity. Our faith impels us to go out, to attract through the light of the witnessing of our faith and to serve people, but not because they are Catholic, but because we are Catholic. We don't demand those we assist to convert to Catholicism. Increase our faith, the Apostle implored the Lord. 
This morning, as we begin the general body meeting of the CBCI, we echo their request. Faith is a priceless treasure that God gives us to enlighten our path and enrich our lives. Indeed, we need the light of faith so that especially in these day's meetings we can see beyond what the world sees. We need the light of faith so that our belief in Lord's teaching the truth through his vicar, the Pope, and in the magisterium be strengthened. Dear bishops, I extend to all of you a special blessing from the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and I wish you a fruitful meeting. May the light of faith of the Church in India keep growing and brighten the horizon of our journey at a time when humankind is particularly in need of light and peace. May Mary, the mother of the Church and mother of our faith, awaken in us the desire to follow always the Lord's footsteps. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, as we are gathered here on this auspicious day to celebrate the good things we have received from God, let us ask God to bring good news to the poor and heal the contrite of heart, so that in our time we may bring salvation to all in need. Your response shall be, graciously hear our prayer, O Lord. Graciously hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, we entrust to you, our Pope Francis, all the bishops and religious brothers and sisters. Keep safe the shepherd of your church, along with the flocks entrusted to his care. Direct him in the way to eternal salvation and guide him in his undertakings. Let us pray to the Lord. Graciously hear our prayer, O Lord. We place at your divine hands all the bishops of our country who have gathered here for the 35th Plenary Assembly of CBCI. Lord, pour out upon them the spirit of your wisdom that they may decide everything for the well-being of our country and uphold the core values of Christianity. Let us pray to the Lord. We shall hear our prayer, Lord. Oh Lord. One of the biggest problems that plagues our country is corruption. People, particularly those in power, do things only for personal or party gain, but not out of love for our motherland. Lord, help us to give up our selfish intentions and work for the communal harmony and all-round development of our country. Let us pray to the Lord. Graciously hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray for all those who are gathered here for the Eucharistic banquet. Fill us with your divine graces that we may experience your presence deep within us and thus become your witness in the world of today. Let us pray to the Lord. Graciously hear our prayer, O Lord. Almighty God, Teach us to serve you as you deserve, to give and not count to cost, to toil and not to see what is not appropriate, 
for any reward except that of knowing that we do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your servants, O God, of all compassion, and bestow on them the grace of your light that they may have a true understanding of what is right in your eyes and bodily carry it out through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you bestow gifts sweeted to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailing to her head, head so that with a heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy. 
through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> for the Eucharistic prayer, three in your prayer booklet. <laughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and made them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun, to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who have who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on us all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Upon them to seek the honor of your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before closing this Eucharistic celebration, I would like to thank Cardinal Gracias for inviting me to be the main celebrant in this uh, opening mass for the uh, meetings of the CBCI. Dear bishops, let us be good bishops. The word of God, especially in the first reading, ask us integrity in our life. So let us be a good example for our priests and for our faithful. And let us build a united church in India. We are here to be all the church of Jesus Christ, one church. Even if we are different rights, different languages, different uh, histories, let us be united. And also synodality is meant to build unity, not divisions. So let us commit and pray ourselves for integrity of life, unity in the Church. And for this I ask the blessing from our Lord, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Dear Excellency, Archbishop Leopoldo Girelli, we want to thank you very much for celebrating this inaugural Eucharist and being with us. Thank you for your beautiful homily where you shared with us about the gift of faith 
and how we have to spread it and deepen it. I want to thank also all those cardinals, archbishops and bishops and priests who celebrated this Eucharist. I thank the altar servers, choir members, the ushers, the press, sound and light department and all who have helped to make this celebration a prayerful celebration. When we sing the final hymn, we will go back in procession and unvest. The bishops and the priests will have their snacks and tea in the side shed, while our special invitees and guests will have their tea and snacks just outside. We will be back by 11 a.m. Thank you. <laughs>